Okay, hi everybody, it's uh, Mr. Mellinger. This is the assignment for day 11. Um, it's Monday, February the 11th, and uh, this is the assignment we're gonna work on in class, and then uh, some of this uh, you may do at home. Um, what we're gonna do now in the last couple days, what we've done is learn to figure out the atomic mass and the molar mass of certain compounds. And what you discovered was that um, they're the same number. Okay, so if you took um, hydrogen, a hydrogen atom, it has an atomic mass of 1.01 a atomic mass units. But if you take 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of them, an entire mole, it's the same number. It's 1.01, but it's measured in grams, which is the unit of measure we use in chemistry and in science. So the numbers are exactly equal. It's just different units of measure. And that's why that number 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd is used. It's the only number that will make the mass and atomic mass units convert directly into the same number of uh, same number of grams. Okay, so here we go. Now we're going to start uh, working with some stoichiometry. This is going to get us back to the dimensional analysis um, that we did um, about a week and a half ago. So let me just read some notes I put on this assignment. Stoichiometry is the study of Excuse me. So here is the study of conversions from the language of chemical equations to the measures that we make in the real world, such as grams of solids uh, or liters of gases. A mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Usually this refers to a number of atoms or molecules, but a mole could be a mole of anything. Uh, the chemical equation below can be read um, two hydrogen molecules plus one oxygen molecule will combine to produce two water molecules. But if we multiply those coefficients, the two in front of the hydrogen and water and the one in front of the oxygen, uh, if we multiply all those by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, then we can read that as two hydrogen H2 moles or two moles of hydrogen plus one mole of O2 will produce two moles of water. And that's a quantity that's big enough for us to see, for us to actually put on a scale. And so we scale everything up by moles in order to have quantities that are big enough to actually work with. Um, so solids. Um, we still can't count the, a mole of atoms or molecules. So how do we know how, uh, we have a mole? And we do this by using a mass in grams of one mole of an atom or molecule. He, um, of a particular atom or molecule. Here are the molar masses of some common molecules. Uh, so for example, one mole of hydrogen is one, actually 1.01 grams. One mole of H2O is 18, actually technically 18.02 grams. And one mole of CH4, which is methane, is um, 16 or actually 16.05 grams because um, we are going to be using the decimals in this class uh, to at least two decimal places when we do atomic and molar masses. Okay, so this little illustration down below is just meant to show you that because we can measure grams on a triple beam balance, we'll be using these quite a bit, we can calculate the number of moles. So the scale allows us to measure in grams. That's something that we, we can work with. And then be using this translation, this translator called the molar mass conversion. It tells you how many moles of a substance, or how many grams would one mole of a substance uh, weigh or what mass would it have? So it relates moles to grams of mass. And that's the translation we need because we work in the world of grams and chemical equations work in the world of moles. So we, that allows us this scale and this conversion right here allows us to work with this chemical equation and know how much, um, how much of a substance that we need. Okay, so um, I'm going to give you an example here. What you see here is, man, it's kind of like a graphic or a visual or graphic organizer to understand this relationship. Here's chemistry. Chemistry, in chemistry, the chemicals say we need two H2 molecules for every one O2 molecule uh, to produce two molecules of water. Again, we can scale that up and say that we need two moles of H2 plus one mole of O2 to give us two moles of H2O. But again, we can't count a, a mole of a molecule or an atom. The atoms and molecules are too small and a mole is a number that's too big. So we can't work with that. So what we have to do is we're down here. This is our world. We're dealing in the world of grams. And you can think of us as speaking in the language of grams and chemical equations speaking in the language of moles. 
And just like someone who speaks English only and someone who speaks Spanish only, if they want to communicate with each other, they have to have a translator. And that translator are these mass molar mass conversions. It's one mole of whatever the substance is equals so, so many grams. And you figure this out using your periodic table, using the atomic masses on your periodic table. So one mole of O2 is 32, one mole of H2 is 2.02. So um, let's take the example problems down here, and this is the best way to understand this. All right, so it says, how many moles of H2O can be made from 2.5 moles of O2? So what you do is you're given 2.5 moles of O2 to start with, okay? Um, so you put that over on the left-hand side of your equation. And the question is asking you, you remember how we did this with dimensional analysis, how many moles of H2O? So you put a question mark moles of H2O over here. So now what you have to do is you have to get the moles of O2 to cancel out and moles of H2O to appear on the top. So you do that by, by relating two moles of H2O to one mole of O2. Now, if you look up here, how do you know that there's that relationship of two to one? You simply look inside the chemical equation. There's two moles of H2 are gonna be used up for every one mole of O2 that's used. So you simply use the coefficients on front of each of those particular elements, two moles, or excuse me, I, I should have been over here, two moles of H2O for every one mole of O2. So you simply use the coefficients of the two in front of the water and the one in front of the O2. So two moles of H2O, one mole of O2. You see moles of O2 cancels out and moles of H2O ends up on the top. So 2.5 times two gives you five moles. I mean, just think about that, log think about that logically. Um, you need one mole of O2 to produce two moles of H2O. So if you have two points, that means you're going to get twice as many moles of H2O as you put in moles of O2. So if you use 2.5 moles of O2, you're going to get twice that many moles of water. And in fact, that's what you get. So don't think of these as a specific number of moles that you have to use for the chemical equation. Think of them as ratios. In other words, you don't have to use exactly two moles of H2, exactly one mole of O2 to get exactly two moles of water. If, if I put in um, four moles of H2, and enough O2, I would get, um, I get twice as many moles of this, I'll get twice as many moles of water out of, that would be four moles of water. So think of them as ratios of moles, not just a specific number of moles that you must put in. Okay. So how many moles of H2O can be made from 0.73 moles of H2? So I'm gonna put, lightly put this here, 0.37 moles right there, okay. Uh, of H2. So how many moles of H2O are we going to get? That's over here. Well, look, for every two moles of H2 I put in, I get two moles of H2O, which means it's a one-to-one -one ratio. I get exactly as many moles of H2O as moles of H2. So if I put in 0.37 moles there, I'm going to end up with 0.37 moles over here. Okay, there you go. 3737. The way you would set that up is 0.37 moles of H2. That's what you're given to start with. You multiply that by the ratio of moles of H2O to moles of H2, because you need moles of H2 to cancel out here. So there you got moles of H2, and you need moles of H2O to appear on the top. So you put those two over each other, and the numbers in front are simply the, co simply the coefficients that you see up here, um, right there. So it's two moles of H2O for every two moles of H2. That basically just cancels out to become one, and you end up with the same number of moles of water that you had moles of hydrogen gas. Okay, next, let's do the next one. Um, let me erase this up here. And you do not need to draw this. It's just meant to give you a, a visual understanding of what's going on here. So let's look at the C. And it is how many grams of H2 are needed to make 3.76 grams of H2O. Now, these last two problems just required a single conversion. What this visually can help you do up here is, is visualize how many conversions are you going to need. So we say we, we want to make 3.76 grams of H2O. So we're going to put a 3.76 grams here in our grams area. That's our world. That's what we measured out on a scale. Now, how do we get over here? We want to know how many grams of H2. That's right here. That's in the grams area under H2. So how do we get from here to here? We can't go directly from grams to grams. 
It doesn't work that way. You're, you can't do that. What we have to do is go into the world of the chemical equation. Once we, and we use this translator to convert our grams to moles of water. Once we have, know how many moles of water we have, we have to translate moles of water over to moles of H2. Once we know how many moles of H2 we have, we use this translator right here to get us back out into our world of how many grams of H2 we would have to measure out in order to make that process happen. So think about that. That's three different conversions. You're going from grams to moles of water, from moles of water to moles of hydrogen, and from moles of hydrogen back out to grams of hydrogen. So that's three different conversions. So let's see how this works down here. Okay, we know we wanna end up with grams of H2 right here. That means we have to have grams of H2 on the top here. Okay, over here we have to get rid of grams of water. So how do we know where to do that? The first thing you wanna do anytime you do these problems is figure out the molar mass of each of the compounds that are in the problem. Eventually you'll get to where you just figure out the ones you actually need, but for right now, just figure them all out. Now there's only one place up here that you see grams of water. We start off with 3.76 grams of water. There's only one place up here you see it and it's right there, 18.02 grams of water for every one mole. So that means our first conversion has to have 18, it should be 18.02 to be more precise, grams of water divided by one mole. Okay, so now we have moles of H2O, but we don't want to end up with moles of H2O, we want to end up with grams of H2. So how do we relate moles of H2O to H2? Well, we see that we have two moles of H2O for every two moles of H2. So we do that conversion that we did in the previous problem, two moles of H2 for every two moles of H2O. So you see moles of H2O cancels out. Uh, we already had grams of H2O cancel out. So now we have moles of H2. That means down here on the bottom, we have to have moles of H2 in order for these two to cancel out. And we already knew that we have to have grams of H2 up on the top. So what relates those two? And that's the molar mass conversion right over here that relates moles of H2 to grams of H2. So we simply put grams of H2 on the top. That's our last man standing. That's gonna be the final uh, unit of measure. And this canceled out with this, this with this, this with this. Now you just crunch the numbers and you get 0.418. Okay, finally, how many grams of O2 are needed to make 7.4 grams of H2O? So let's come back up here. We wanna make, in this case, uh, 7.41 grams of H2O. So let's erase the numbers we had here earlier. Okay, and what do we have? So we wanna make, we want to make 7.41 grams of H2O. And it wants to know how many grams of oxygen. So how many grams of that? So in other words, what we have to do is we have to work, this is the number we're given to start with. So we have to convert from grams of H2O into moles of H2O using this translator, this conversion right here. Then, then once we get that, we move over to moles of O2 and that'll give us a number that we can then translate into grams of O2. So again, that's one, two, three conversions that you have to do. So let's look at that. So we start off with what we know, which is 7.41 grams of H2O. We wanna end up with some number of grams of O2 down here at the end, okay? If we have grams of H2O on the top, there's only one place up here that we see grams of H2O. It's that same conversion we used last for the last part of the problem. So it's one mole of H2O for every 18.02 grams of H2O. Now we have to relate moles of H2O to moles of O2 and look at the relationship. It's two to one, two for water, one for oxygen. So we come down here, we need to have moles of H2O on, on the bottom. Well, we have it on the top here. We need to have it on the bottom here. So there's two moles of H2O for every one mole of O2. Again, we got that straight from the coefficients in front of water and in front of oxygen. And finally, we know the last man standing has to be grams of O2, so we have to have grams of O2 here. And in order for the moles of O2 here to cancel out, we have to have moles of O2 on the bottom. So grams of O2 over moles of O2, and that gives us, um, we, we come up to this conversion right here, that gives us that relationship, and now we're ready to crunch the numbers. Everything has canceled out, and we end up with 6.59 grams.
Okay, that's the end of the introduction video. I'm now going to do a second video that'll just go through and do the solutions to the problems.